or playing with the cheeks today i am finally playing with the new ish at this point <laughs> patrick ta major headlines blush palette volume two this was one of my favorite launches last year so i had to get my hands on this palette so we finally have it all in one piece kind of I'll show you, but I ordered this when it first launched and then it got really delayed because of Hurricane Ian. And then when I got it, it was completely shattered. So that really put the time frame on this back and then I had to reorder it online because it wasn't available in stores yet. So it took a bit and then there was a lot of other releases that I wanted to review before this. So it's finally here. I still wanted to play with it even though it's past due. It's still fine. So finally, we have it here. This time, the second time around, it did not come completely shattered. And when I say shattered, I mean all three of these powders were just obliterated. It was a mess. So mine did come though because I just can't win. One of the highlights is out. So I'm going to leave this on my desk so that I don't forget and so that it doesn't fall. But anyways, you can pick this up from Sephora, which is where I got it, or the Patrick Tell website. I will have it linked down below. It's a bit pricey. It is $58, but I think Patrick Tell just does a phenomenal job with his line that I'm willing to put the coin down. So we did that with this and I just know it's going to be good because I had the one from last year and loved it. And I love this formula from Patrick Ta. Here is the outer carton that it's going to come in. This palette is limited edition. The one last year really was limited edition. So he means business. And then here is the back in case you need to see. And then that's not the exciting part. Here is the palette itself. It has kind of this hazy cloudy cover compared to last years which is mirrored like most of his line so this one is a little bit different i like this frosty effect here and then here is the back of the palette made in usa has a 12 month shelf life now this palette is different because it features two blush duos one cream one powder which is a formula we're familiar with and then it also features a cream highlight and powder highlight duo which is new because the one last year did not have it so let's take a look at the colors it's a class closure so you do have to dig your nails in it does have a full-size mirror that stands up on its own and what i love about patrick ta's items is there is a cover over the creams so the powders don't get into the creams so here's a closer look at the colors i'm holding the powder that fell out here all of these are brand new shades we have giving flirty giving sun kiss and giving glossy over at the end with the highlight i'm really excited about this we will definitely be comparing this to what I do have in my collection but first let's swatch I'm gonna start off on this side here with giving flirty here's the cream and the powder let's see so giving flirty is described as a soft pink and these are blushes so they might not swatch the best which is not a bad thing giving flirty's powder definitely has a little sheen to it so that's what that one looks like next we have giving sunkissed it's described as a golden peach though I feel like yes this is yeah it's a golden peach it's kind of like NARS orgasm so this looks really pretty we'll have to see if these two look different on the cheek and then lastly this is giving glossy so we have a transparent gloss and an opal pearlescent shade so we'll take a look at this as well I typically don't like glossy cheek shades but we'll mess around with it so these are the swatches it is blushes, so it is a bit on the underwhelming side. We just got to get them on the cheeks and play, so let's do that. Now, if you watch Patrick's demo on these, he suggests that you can actually use the powder down first and then the cream over top to get a glossy glow. Since I do have the palette from last year and I'm very familiar with these formulas, honestly, I prefer to put the cream down first and then the powder. It's what I find works best for me, so that's what I'm going to do. And the first shade that we're going to get into is Giving Flirty. We're going to see this hot pink so I'm gonna start off with a sponge I like to use a beauty blender get just a little bit on there and let's see how pigmented it is it's hard to see the sponge is pink so I can't really see how much I picked up but it's very sheer I was worried it was gonna be too pigmented but you have to build it up a little bit if you want a lot of color to show which is good for you fair girls but I'm surprised because last year's was so pigmented this one I'm going back and I'm blending first. So if you have a deeper complexion, what you definitely want to do is to put the cream down first so that the pigment from the powder blush will pick up more. 
but that's really really subtle it's very pretty i'm just gonna go ahead and go into giving sun kiss next the other cream shades so that we can see how the cream shades differ from one another and you can use these cream blushes alone or the powder blushes alone you don't have to use them all but mixing in a cream and powder is going to really help with longevity i know it's cooling down in places but it's actually quite hot in florida so i still like to layer and again giving sun kissed is more sheer very interesting it's just different to how it was last year but you can see they're very pretty from what i'm able to tell i do have a little bit of powder on i did set my under eyes and put a powder bronzer down but i didn't put powder on my cheeks these actually have a very kind of glossy effect to them which i think makes my cheeks look quite wet so do i want to put the cream gloss down i think i'm going to put the cream gloss down to see how it differs from the finish of the cream blushes but very very pretty i actually like what giving sun kissed is giving me it's a little bit more warm and i feel like it looks really nice but the two cream blushes don't look that much different from one another if i'm being honest but anyways let's just see how giving glossy the gloss shade looks on the cheek i want to see i normally don't like highlights like this so We'll put it over top of powder as well to see how it does once I put the blushes down. Yeah, it gave a little extra, right? But it's actually quite natural. I don't notice it breaking up anything underneath, but I wouldn't say it's like the smoothest look. Put a little bit more here. It feels like I'm putting lip gloss on my face, like a slick lip gloss, not a sticky one, but still. It kind of gives that supermodel glow, right? That's pretty. Let's do the powders now because I'm a big powder girl. <laughs> I'm going to use my Angie Hot and Flashy from BK Beauty 8507. Let's see how these powders do. So I'm just gonna get a little bit. These are a little bit more on the powdery side, so you do get some kickback. I don't wanna make sure I don't have too much because the powder is definitely giving the pigment here. Wow, yeah. So this is when it's gonna become more appropriate for medium to deep skin tones. And I'm just looking over here to make sure everything's in focus on my monitor. Sometimes I use it as a mirror. Is it just me though? Or did this pull up the coverage from my foundation? right you're seeing that did that over here too it's the cream not the powder it did pull it up a little bit i don't know something about the creams this year seem a little bit glossier hold on let me feel last year's palette okay i don't know if it's because these are newer but you can see a complete formulation difference between last year's palette and this year this is last year's palette and this is this year's this year's has more glossiness to it more wetness compared to last year's, which has a little bit more of a, not matte finish, but it's more soft and powdery as opposed to it being wet and glossy. And I feel like the glossiness of this year's kind of pulled up the coverage underneath. Is anybody noticing that? Anyways, okay. I thought something looked a little different. That's what it was. Not crazy. I see it now. We're working through this together. <laughs> okay, but this is quite pink. I know I always go a little overboard for these, but I want you to see the color because blush is hard to see. I would not normally apply this much. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a Sydney Grace blush brush now, and we're going into Giving Sun Kissed again. Tap off the excess and pop it right on top. Let's do a little bit more of an appropriate amount here. Now, when you put these over top of this cream, because it's a little bit more slicky this year and wet, I find it's also harder to kind of blend the powder blushes on top. So you want to make sure you tap off and disperse it really well on your brush before you apply it on your cheek, because if you have too much powder and pigment concentrated in one part of your brush, it's going to be harder to blend out. Now, it's not like difficult to blend out, but I, I felt more ease with this last year. Mm, I love this shade. Giving Sun Kissed, it's, it's more my preferred color. Color. I know we look crazy on <laughs> giving flirty, but I wanted you to see the difference. And these two do look different, which is very nice. I am going to tone this down though a little bit because I want it to be a little bit more wearable looking. Getting a little bit of foundation on the foundation brush that I use. Nothing crazy. But I just want to tone down like right here in this area and then right here as well. And this is going to kind of make me look more like a normal human being. Okay, so now it looks really, really good. <sighs> Putting that liquid on top did not disrupt how anything looked. Very pretty, very my speed. Oh, I did say I wanted to try the gloss highlighter over top now that we have powders down. 
just a little bit. I'm just gonna put it on one cheek to see if the highlight looks different with gloss right fresh and underneath and not. That's really subtle. Very pretty. I like this more than I thought I was going to. I think this formula is more appropriate for this glossy highlight kind of use. Hopping on into the highlight, the powder highlight, I'm using a Sigma X Beauty Bird Dream Glow. Putting it right on top of the gloss. Ooh, I really like this highlight. The color of it is so nice. It really did grab onto that gloss. You can see exactly where the gloss is. It's not the smoothest looking highlight. Like, There's some powder highlights that I feel like have a finer mill. This one is not the finest mill. It doesn't have that smooth glide across the cheek. It's pretty though. It's nice, but it's not the smoothest looking highlight. Like I said, it doesn't have that super duper fine mail that I played with before. So it's not the smoothest finish on the cheek, but I'm not bothered. I think it's gorgeous. I'm just gonna put some like all over my eye area to lift that up because I don't have anything on my eyes except for bronzer. When in doubt, put highlight everywhere. So the highlight definitely, now that I'm looking up close, it's not the most flattering. It doesn't have the smoothest finish because when I look straight ahead, right? You see, it's, it doesn't look amazing. I think all the layering was not a good idea. Gotta keep it simple. Don't do powder, cream, powder, cream, powder. I think that kind of messed with it. Okay, yeah, I definitely have some thoughts about this. Give me a minute, let me get my comparison swatches ready and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how I feel about this because, huh, nope, not exactly the outcome I was expecting. I did just kind of take off some of the cheek makeup and reapply it because I needed to make sure about a few things before I kind of gave you some more final thoughts. I mean, I'm gonna still update you in my speed reviews. I'm definitely not as crazy about this. The formula is a little different, even though I did kind of reapply. I feel like this formula is a little fussy. You can't over layer, you can't over blend because then it will start to look really dry. So my skin was looking okay after I redid everything. And then I kind of went through and re-blended everything at the end. And then it started to break up again. I'm just, I'm not, mm. And then the highlight has a little bit of some glitter, I noticed, I felt like, just a little bit. It's just not amazing, like, Patrick Ta normally does. The formula of the creams in particular are quite different. So I noticed even in the singles that I have from him, the formulas in the creams this year in this palette are, like I said, more slick and wet as opposed to the other ones which have more of a dry down to them. Now I'm not saying that they're dry, but they're not super ooey gooey wet. And I don't like that. I found that it separated my foundation a little bit, kind of took the coverage away. It's just a little funky. So I did a swatch by swatch comparison between this year's palette and last year's. So let me show you first. Obviously they are quite different. We're not swatching here for dupe for dupe. There is very different colors in here and different formulas, different purposes, like with the highlights. But for me, I was just kind of feeling the formulas out. So over here is last year's palette and this is this year's palette. And you can even see the differences in the creams, the level of pigmentation, how these are, just picked up more on my finger, but they're kind of a little patchy. Ah, I'm so sad. Uh, the powders are good. Last year's powders had a lot more pigmentation, which made them great for medium to deep skin tones. This year's is definitely more light to medium friendly, but they're just different. And I thought that there were some similarities in She's That Girl to the new palette. So She's That Girl is right here, and this is She's Sunkissed Cream Blush, and then She's Flirty Powder Blush. Kind of similar, not exact dupes, but similarities. Again, the same thing with the formula differences. Now, I hadn't watched anybody else's review on this, so I don't know if anybody else noticed what I noticed, but I'm not feeling this one's like I was feeling last year. It's just not as good. It's not a bad palette. I don't think it's bad quality. I think it's a little bit more fussy than it needs to be, especially for the price point. It's just not as good as last year's. I know better can be done. That being said, I mean, if you're more on the light, fair side, 
I think you will like this a lot more, but this isn't going to be for everybody. I feel like the individuals have a little bit of better quality to them. So if that's just how I'm feeling, this one just seemed a little off. I don't think it's bad, like I said. I still think it's good quality. I will continue to use this and update you guys, but I'm probably more likely to reach for last year's over this year's, at least with the cream blushes. I like the cream blushes in here and the old one much more than this year. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I know a lot of you have picked this up. If you have, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I need to go watch some reviews now to see if I am the only one that felt this way. But anyways, I hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you aren't already subscribed. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.